Sonne. I'm in, let's roll. <laughs> My body has given out. You take away my medications, my oxygen. I'll be dead before sundown. Ah, oh, thank you. Right. <laughs> you like it? Yep. Okay, let me see. I got my coffee here, my water. Pills, inhalers, all of this stuff to start my day. <sighs> all of this helps me breathe. The problem is I've got to hold my breath to get it. <laughs> That's really kind of catch-22. My name is Kelly Johnson. I'm 75 years old, and the end of my life is coming up on Monday. <sighs> One of two. I hardly had enough strength to blow my nose and the prospect of trying to go to bed, you know, trying to get dressed, do a catheterization. It is so scary. And I would sit there and say, I don't know if I can do this. And I had to do it a day and, and another day and another day. <laughs> the end of when I have to do that's here. Look back on your life. It's going to be extraordinary. Everybody has an extraordinary story. And I do. I was born in a lake resort area in Columbia City, Indiana. So when I was a little kid, my mother put me to work. She did not get the Mother of the Year award. We worked, went on the vaudeville circuit, Chicago. I, I was a tap dancer and an acrobat and contortionist. I'd be on my knees, I'd lean back over my head, grab my ankles, and I'd roll around the stage like a ball. Uh, and I can still hear my neck cracking every time I went over my neck. <laughs> but I had my first spinal fusion at 14. So I ended up with a whole body rack with arthritis. After that, I came to uh, San Francisco. My ex-wife and I started a company called San Francisco Dance Theater. We made a major impact on dance here. There's a real horror story about the closing of San Francisco Dance Theater. My son came out to live with me, and immediately, my son and my second wife became lovers. And uh, uh, that was as close as I came to understanding murder. I really clearly, clearly understood it. I had my hands around her neck, but I didn't do it. 
because I knew I wanted the rest of my life. So that sort of blew up that. Uh, it never got repaired. After that, I went to the Berkeley Symphony Orchestra. So if you wanted to see somebody in Berkeley, you came to a Berkeley Symphony concert, you got a wonderful program, and you got a community event. You know, my health was shot, so I, I had to get out of a high-stress job. I started the circuit from Napa down to San Jose, and I did one-hour piano classical concerts. At my peak, I did 130 performances a year. Then I decided to write all original music for ballet classes, since that was my field. So I've managed to produce something that I loved to the very end. I just remember so many times hearing from my mother that I was lazy and never going to amount to anything. But it did. <laughs> so, everything that happened for good or bad made up this face right here. I'm happy for it. I like my face. So I look back at my life, I've choreographed an extraordinary dance. It's over. You know, strike a pose, bring the curtain down. I came to Fillmore Street in 1969. Everything was happening in this neighborhood and I felt I got to be here. <laughs> I loved it from day one. And this was all these years, almost 50 years later. I still love it. We went to the farmer's market. Oh, whoa. Fresh strawberries. <laughs> strawberries and white pants. That was a good That's a good idea. <laughs> it's amazing to watch uh, him taste something, and then sometimes there's like a little shadow, and you see him realize that might be the last strawberry I eat. And then he perks up again, you know. Um, but it's, uh, it's intense. Yeah. We have to dust some of these liqueurs off. We're doing a pretty good job. And this is I mean, they're down by about 40%. We're making progress. But, I don't even know what some of these are. Well, I've been having the cream of the cacao. It's my dad, but he's my friend. We've traveled together. Um, we've cooked together in this kitchen a thousand times, but I'm still not used to the fact that he's not in the kitchen with me. Um, that was such a big part of, of our relationship. I think it's a little telling. We're talking about the last day of my life. And we're talking about food. And all we can talk about is food. Pancakes and I mean, how, how perfect is that? I mean, when you would come here, we spent our whole time in the kitchen. Yeah. You know, it's the perfect day. It's going to be the perfect day. But I think I'll. I think I'll remember him now at the at the end in those moments where. He's making eye contact like he never did before. I mean, he's like right there um, with everybody. Like he wants to get to your soul, you know, he wants to make sure you know that he sees you with this sweet little smile on his face most of the time. And, and that's what I'm going to remember. You know, my daughter, Lita Meredith, she's just such an extraordinary person. What she is doing to take care of me to the end is phenomenal. My downstairs neighbor, David Ty, I wish everybody could have a friend like him. He is my angel. So close. Okay. I'm ready for my close up. <laughs> places, people, places. Places. Hey. Action. Whoops, you've done it all. <laughs> I've had an amazing life. And now I'm going to turn my life over to all of my friends. And there are lots of friends, lots of friends. And I can say, I now live through you. And I know they're going to take really good care of me. I am so happy. Monday, 
Monday is going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be a beautiful day. And that's when my friends take over my life. There's not going to be a black period of my life. You don't have to have a black period in your life. I mean, I don't. And I'm very fortunate for that. I'm in my home. I've got everything. I've got live music. I've got live people. I could go in a nursing home. I'd have a chest at the end of my bed with my belongings in it. And somebody's prolonging my life in misery. This morning, I went in, he's very emotional in the mornings usually. Um, whatever he's been dreaming all night is like right there. And, and I, he said to me, um, all my life, you know, like so many of us, my brain has been screaming at me every morning of what I'm supposed to do and what I need to get, you know, finished. He said that this morning, his brain for the first time was quiet. And there was some very personal issues around his son, who he's been estranged from most of his life. And that was the apology that he sent off. There were no recriminations. There was nothing except he was sorry he hadn't got to spend time with him. Definitely, I feel I've resolved enough stuff that tomorrow, that last day, uh, I think my mind is going to go peacefully, you know, it's, so that's good. Uh, everything's coming together just right. I, I, I'm so doing the right thing. Um, and uh, I've got this whole community helping me do it. Uh, life doesn't get better than that. It just doesn't. <laughs> right. uh, so I'm happy. I'm crying, but I'm happy. <laughs> oh, God. The end of artificial breathing. You know, the end of artificial everything. You know. And then it'll just be me and my body. And it's going to float away. I know from my eyes, I'm just... Looking at those shirts hanging there. What a lifetime of memories. I know where I were each one of them. And I kind of know how I felt when I had each one of them on. I know what I want to wear to Pete's, and that's that, that linen shirt. I want to show up looking good. Okay. One, two, three. Here we go. That was easy. Give me your elbows yeah, here. You, okay. you guys got his, his, his torso. Yeah, you can just lean on me there, Kelly. I'm good. One more step. Go back another one. Wait a second, Richard. All right, good morning. Good morning. Make it. All right. Yep. Okay. All right, rotate this way. And you got the handle? Right. All right. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be going to heaven. I'm coming from heaven. <laughs> you're, you're going to another room in heaven. Another room. Right, we'll carry you. I'm good. He's good. Yeah. Come to this elbow. Yeah. Let's go. No, keep going. All right. Keep going. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. All right. 
And we're off and running. Yeah, we are. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Can we get somebody behind him? Yeah. Right. Jason? I'm right here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I can do one last step here and got it. <laughs> wow, wow, look at this. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful day. Hold on one second. Oh, no. Oh, orange feathers. We used to put this on our Christmas trees. Right. <laughs> last, one of the last things that went on our Christmas tree every year, we had the pink pink and orange feathers on our tree. That's it was beautiful. Oh, did you really? For years That was your thing. But, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know you <laughs> Wow. Thinking of a way to say goodbye. Morning, Gary. Morning, Mr. Biggles. Good morning, Fred. Good morning. Good morning. Give me morning. And it probably, it it probably needs to be out. Uh, maybe they can do that for you, Kel. <laughs> That's the one that I want. It says, in, I, in, in remembrance of Kelly Johnson, uh, mayor of Peach and friend right. to all. Uh, Kelly Johnson is in the house. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right where uh, you belong. Uh, right where you belong. We've all created this wonderful spot here on Fillmore Street. You know, all of us together. It's, I can't think of a better place to spend my last day than starting off my day with all of you people because I've done it for so many years and uh, this is my last day and I'm very happy. This particular piece is the social center of the neighborhood. So many people there, the gatherings there. I mean, there's a huge clan there. My life would be entirely different were it not for that piece and those people. Hello. And where's my glasses? Because I'm crying. Oh, that's all right. You cry, but you're happy for me, I hope. I'm happy for you. I don't know any details. I'll find out from your buddy, but I would have died if I missed you. No, that, that's a bad word that's to right. say. No. No, I would have died if you missed me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a major choice you're making. It is, but it's the right one. All right. One, two, three. Kelly! All right. All right. <laughs> Let me say goodbye to Maddie. Yeah, Rick, Rick, Rick. Come here, Maddie. Aww. Yes, yes, sweetheart. Yes, a lot of us today. Put the tissue down for one second. Right. What a pleasure it was to know you, and thank you for making the world a little less crazy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but, but look, you know, people can do this. This can be people's last day. I woke up today, the first day of my life, where my brain seemed to be telling me, you're okay. You've taken care of all the big issues. Fortunately, I had just enough time for me to try to do something about those wounds. Whether it fixed them or not is not important. What's important is my brain says, you're okay, and you fade away and leave yourself with your friends. That's my everlasting life. And I'm very happy, just very happy. This whole end of life process is uh, interesting. You have to meet with a doctor and doctors can opt out. Then you have to meet with a second doctor then you have to have a pharmacy that opts in, and there's only one in San Francisco that does that. So then it's all arranged, and they send the, the cocktail. 
this cocktail ends up being a half a cup of powder, which you mix that with liquid and take it. But that half a cup of powder is 99.0 capsules that you have to open up into a cup. And then I'm going to use orange juice to take it. And there you have it. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible that that's possible because I hate to think what I'd be going through if I had to drag it out.